Welcome to our lecture online and now let's talk about the graphing of logarithmic functions. Again, we have the function y equals the logarithm of base a of x. Now what does that look like? Well here are various numbers of graphs and notice the only difference between the graphs is the value for the base. So in general, the shape of a function that is a logarithmic function looks like the black line right here. Notice that all the lines cross at the point when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0, and that would indeed be, be the case. Why is that? Well, it turns out when you look at the logarithmic function, and remember, this can be written as x is equal to a to the y power. The only way to get, uh, if, well, if you plug in a 0 for y, you get 1 for x, regardless of the value for a. Because anytime any base is raised to an exponent equal to 0, you always get 1. So it doesn't matter what a is equal to, when y is equal to 0, x always has to be equal to 1. Now, the only way that could change is if you put another factor in there. For example, if you put y is equal to 1 half the log, or 10 times the log, then of course that function will change. Now notice that if a becomes small, for example, base 2, then the function doesn't slope down as, or I should say, so notice when the base is a small number that the function rises more quickly than when the base is a large number. Again, the reason for that is you're looking for an exponent that when you take the base rate to the exponent, you get the value x. So x can be a very large number for a very small value for y when the base is a large number. And that's why the slope is like this for a large base and like this for a small base. Also notice we can write y equals the log to base e of x. Now e of course again is that natural number 2.71828 and so forth. And another way of writing that we can say that this is equal to y equals the natural log of x. So when we have base e we can actually write as ln and that means the natural logarithmic function and we'll get into more details of that later. The more common function is log to base 10 and that's called the common logarithmic function because in mathematics everything is base 10 except for the natural functions and so therefore they call this the common logarithmic function. So let's take a look and see again what we would get for the values of x and y when we plug a table of values in there. For example what would y be equal to when x is 10,000, what would y be equal to when x is 1,000 and so forth and notice all you have to do is count the number of zeros. If x is equal to 10,000 there's four zeros that means y is equal to 4. If x is equal to 1,000, y is equal to 3. When x is equal to 100, y is equal to 2. Again, you say, well, why can I say that? And the thing you can say is because, and we go back to this concept right here, a to the y power equals x. So in this case, 10 to the fourth power is equal to 10,000. 10 to the third power is equal to 1,000. 10 to the second power is equal to 100 and so forth and that's how you can find the values of y. So when x is equal to 10, y is equal to 1. When x equals to 1, y is equal to 0. Now, what if x is equal to 1 tenth? So now you say, well, 10 to what number gives me 1 tenth? And then you realize that y, if y is equal to negative 1, because 10 to the negative 1 is equal to 1 over 10 to the 1, which is equal to 1 over 10. In other words, when x equals 1 10, y is equal to minus 1. What about when x is equal to 1 100? Well, again, you could say 10 to the y power is equal to 1 over 100. In other words, 10 to the negative 2 power is equal to 1 over 10 to the second power is equal to 1 over 100. In other words, when x is equal to 1 over 100, y can be negative 2 or y is equal to negative 2 and when x is equal to 1 over 1000 y is equal to negative 3. So when the number with the zeros is in the denominator y is a negative number when it's like this y is a positive number. Another way of looking at logarithmic functions and again a better understanding of how to graph the logarithmic functions based on the value of a and based on the value of x. That's how we graph logarithmic functions.